fresh. Oh. Hello, hi, welcome to The Humble Bartender. I'm Will Crawshaw. Today we're talking about the martini. So the martini is an iconic cocktail. This is not a traditional martini glass I've got here, but this is my favorite glass to drink one out of. So this is what I'm gonna serve it in today. So the history of the martini, has got kind of murky origins, really. There's a lot of debate as to where it originated and where it first came from. The first kind of mention of the martini is apparently in the new and improved illustrated bartending manual in 1888, but nobody knows for sure. Some people say the Martinez were the precursor of the martini and some say it was traced to the Italian vermouth brand uh, martini which we're going to be using in this video actually. We've kind of got to give partial credit to Harry Craddock from the Savoy cocktail book in the 1930s, a lot of mention in there. Undeniably one of the most iconic drinks, uh, one of the most featured drinks in films popularized by James Bond. Today we're making a gin martini, in my eyes that's kind of how it should be. A vodka martini was popularized in later years. So we're going to dive straight in and I'm going to show you how I make my perfect martini. There's many ways to have a martini, you can have it dry, you can have it wet, you can have it with a twist or with an olive. You can have it dirty, it's completely up to you. The dirty martini is with some of the olive brine in there. A dry martini is essentially with very little or none of the vermouth whatsoever. I know some bartenders who will wash their mixing glass with the vermouth and then discard it before adding the gin. A wet martini is essentially a little bit more vermouth. There's some people say shaken or stirred, like a Vespa martini for me, I shake it purely so you've got extra dilution in there. It softens up the booze. I think it's a fantastic way to do it personally. It really just liven it up a little bit. But for a classic martini, it's gotta be stirred for me. I'm gonna be stirring this gin martini today. I'm gonna be showing you how I like it, which is wet with a twist. Uh, I'm gonna be adding a little drop of bitters as well. You don't have to, but this is just the way I like mine. So for me, I've got a mixing glass chilled down here. I've had some cube dice sat in here for, for a moment or two, probably a little bit long for my liking. So we're gonna just give it a good stir around to make sure it is cold. You could be using a tin for this. You could be using a Boston glass, which um, they do come included in a lot of the packs. Anything's fine. I've used a vase for this before. I've used various receptacles, just used a pint glass. It, it doesn't really matter. I like the way the spoon stirs and the fact that you've got a lip on here as well. Personally, for me, that's a nice little touch as a bartender. So I'm gonna drain off the excess water here. As not to add too much dilution to the cocktail. One last little stir. Make sure we've got no water in there whatsoever. Just a really nice cold mixing glass ready to go. So my gin of choice, Tanqueray. You can really use anything for this, whatever gin you like. I like a London Dry, a good quality one. Tanqueray 10 is fantastic, even better. For just a staple gin martini of good quality, Tanqueray is brilliant, really, really good. As I say, you can use super premium gins. If you want to do a vodka martini, you just follow this recipe exactly the same, but you just use a vodka. Belvedere works quite well. So I'm going to add 50 mils Tanqueray into the mixing glass. Yeah, shot of that down there. And we're using martini extra dry as a vermouth. Very, very popular vermouth. Uh, nothing wrong with this whatsoever. Really, really good. And you can use another brands. We use Nolly Pryor Tattoo. We used other brands such as Regal. There's quite a few. There's some really good quality ones. This is, uh, you know, some bartenders frown upon martini, but there's nothing wrong with this at all. So I'm going to use about seven and a half mils to 10 mils of vermouth for a wet martini. This is with quite a bit of vermouth, really. This is just the way I like it. It's not for everyone, but this is how I drink mine. Two dashes of crystal bitters. These are cold distilled bitters by the bitter uh, as it were. Fantastic little bitters, quite herbaceous, got a bit of spice on them there. Just a couple of dashes makes all the difference. So, get in there and stir the cocktail. So it's really nice and cold. This is what we're going for. I've done martinis in the past, uh, pre batched them in bottles, can keep them in the freezer, pour it straight out, or just add a little bit of water for dilution. It's fantastic. For the days I get home from a busy night in the bar, just pour it straight out. It's really, really good. She's lovely and chilled, so we'll have a little taste. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. This is the glass I like to drink a martini out of, personally. Um, as I say, this is actually a bit of anniversary wear that my girlfriend got us. Fantastic, really lovely cut crystal, beautiful glass. So get your Hawthorne or whatever strainer you've got. You can use a julep strainer as well because we've not been shaking, so there's no little shards of ice that are gonna creep into the glass. And in she goes. It's a simple cocktail. But yeah, a thing of beauty. So you wanna get all that in there. I'm not missing a drop on this one. So we have our drink. I have a very large lemon once more. So I'm gonna do is a nice little twist. I've used grapefruits before. Grapefruit works really well, especially if you're using stuff like Tanqueray 10. An orange zest works quite well. You can really kind of play with the citrus. Lime's been used before. Depending on what gin you've got, you can kind of play around with the garnish a little bit. I've, um, I've had ones using Hendrix and we've done a really nice thin ribbon of uh, cucumber, put it on an olive stick and just kind of sat it on top of the cocktail, which has been really beautiful. Adds a nice little aroma to it as well. So the world's your oyster when it comes to a martini in regards to what gin you use, what vermouth you use. I've used several. I, I sometimes like a Bianco. I've had people do 50-50 martinis as well. That's kind of been popularized by the culture of people wanting sessionable cocktails. So low ABV cocktails, obviously. So if you've got more vermouth in there, it's gonna be weaker. You better drink more of them essentially. I'm just gonna trim this down, get rid of some of the pith, trim down the sides, create myself a nice little twist. I like a nice oily lemon, so you get all the aromas in there. You almost see the oils come out on it. Beautiful, this is an unwaxed lemon as well. It's, makes a little bit of a difference. You can kind of drape it around the sides, get some of the essential oils all over there. Like the smell is incredible. It's the best thing about a martini, the lemon twist for me is just the way it go. And in she goes. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen, a classic gin martini. Very easy to do. Play around with the ratios. Try a 50-50 martini. I'll have a little taste up. <sighs> For me, you can't beat it. Really, really good drink. So simple really highlights the gin. So for me, a martini is a great way to test a gin. Yeah, it really lets the botanicals shine. Uh, the more interesting gins, the more interesting martini you'll have. Monkey 47 gin makes an unbelievable martini. So play around with the gins. Um, play around with the vermouths. You can get some better quality vermouths than martini, I will admit, but martini is absolutely fine. You can get them in more bespoke liqueur shops. Uh, see what you can find, have a little play around, see what you think, let me know. Beautiful, great palate cleanser. Could be for a meal, really gets us alive and going. So if you've enjoyed it, let me know how you like your martini. Let me know what gins you're using, what vermouths you're using. Like, share and subscribe as always. I'd love to hear from you. Please do comment, please do get in touch. Um, get onto my Twitter at Humble Bartender or Instagram at The Humble Bartender or drop me a line on the blog at thehumblebartender.com. So I'll see you very soon on the next video, guys. I'll bid you a cheers today. I think I've nailed it.